Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji, and today I want to share with you a little bit about some sewing things. In particular, we're going to be talking about some patterns. Some sewing patterns that I picked up from Joanne. Now, you all know I love to go in Joanne and peruse that pattern aisle like crazy, and I have been stalking the new fall launch. So I did pick up some new fall patterns from Simplicity. So if you are interested in sewing content, sewing patterns, sewing things, subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell, and we will go ahead and get started with this video. One thing I will go ahead and mention is the fact that they did have a lot of the new fall um, reusable tote bags at my Joanne finally and so I picked up some of those and I'm holding all of the patterns in one right now. Fall is my season! Joanne already knew. You all know I love Joanne. I love fall time and the fact that I was able to go ahead and start living my fall fantasy has been such a huge thing for me. Fall is one of my favorite times to sew for, one of my favorite times of the year. I absolutely adore everything about fall. <laughs> so I was very excited to pick up this bag. I did also get one for next month. Creeping it real. I use these um, actually not for groceries, but I do use them to organize my knitting projects. So I got a couple of them and you'll see another one in a future video. But anyways, let's get started with these patterns. I'm going to start off with two of their vintage remake patterns just because these were two patterns that I was super excited to see be remade. They weren't patterns that I knew about before I saw them, but when I did see that they were um, reintroducing them, I was quite excited because I do really like vintage style patterns. Um, yeah, definitely just excited. So the first one I'm going to talk about is S9371, which is um, for a, I think they call this just a dress, but this has um, princess seams in the front. This has a variation of the sleeves and the collar and they also have very different um, finishes for the front. So you could finish it with buttons. You could also finish it um, on the back with kind of like a waist stay belt kind of thing. I don't even know what you would call that. But I really like the lines of this pattern. And I think it is such a great opportunity for me to add long sleeve dresses into my wardrobe. Um, the, co the collar, cuff... Um, situation on version A, which is the version that I will probably make, appear to be removable in some sense. So I'm excited about that because I could have this be just a plain colored top, but I can also have like a contrast print or several contrast print collars to have for other blouses or even other dresses or anything. You know what I'm saying? It's a cool dress that offers a lot of different benefits for me in my wardrobe so I was really excited to see this come back um, and the fact that this style is one that I could transition from fall to winter time is exciting but also making it with short sleeves and um, like a lighter weight fabric it could also be something that I use in the summertime as well and it doesn't use very much fabric um, for my size if I wanted to um, make this version A, it uses two and a quarter of fabric, which anything under three yards for me for a dress is like A. Listen, I might even be able to squeeze out this dress um, with two yards depending on how these pieces are set up. So very excited to add that. And then I also got S9386, which is for a blouse pattern. Now I want to get more blouses because I find that I don't make a lot of separates and <laughs> I talk about this all the time but I want to make more separates because they are a lot more versatile um, 
in my wardrobe and just in styling in general but I just don't get nearly as excited but I was very excited when I saw this blouse because I love the cute little petal design of version D which they do have a sample of but I also like the three-quarter length sleeve with the ruffle which is version C as well and I like the collar details on both of those things um, and you could do this top without the collar and use potentially the collar from like this design for um, a little extra pop if you made a version without the collar too. Anyways, I really like the neck details and how many options you get for this pattern. So you could use linen, you could use um, broadcloth, you could use walls, silks, chambray, sateens, and chalets. Those are typically things you would use for your blouses anyway, and this definitely, I have been collecting a lot of those types of fabrics because I do want to make more blouses. I didn't say, I don't think, for the dress, but this dress you can make with double knit or with flannel or with those blousey type fabrics like this other pattern um, suggests, and you know, that would also be a really good way to change up what season it would fit more appropriately in. Anyways, gonna move on now. <laughs> so then I also, I'm gonna do the two patterns that I got for my husband next because I've actually seen quite a bit of fuss about these on social media already. Um, and my store, I think I probably got to the store when they put these out because these aren't even on display yet. They just had them in a box um, to be put out. <laughs> And I just so happened to know that that was the box. And I asked someone if I could just grab them out. And they were like, yeah, it's fine. So I did. And so thankfully, I was able to get my hands on this pattern. This is Simplicity 9388. I have been waiting forever for them to release a pattern like this. I've been wanting a shacket pattern, not for myself, but for my husband. I did at one point really play around with the idea of wanting a shacket and realized I'm just not a shacket kind of girl. But my husband has been asking for um, a flannel type shirt jacket thing and I've just been like, um, okay. I've had the flannel for a while and I do have Sherpa as well because he wants to do, well I want him to have the Sherpa collar and have the flannel um, jacket be like a contrast to the fuzzy. It's going to be so cute. I'm very excited. Anyways, I'm intending to make him version B. This is a unisex pattern though, so it could be made for anyone. Um, I did get, um, I think they only have one packet too. So it's only one size band for this, for this pattern. And um, it's, it's one that I think would be great to have in your repertoire because if you do have any men in your life, who would not want a super great shacket? And this is not a pattern that has loads and loads of shaping or loads and loads of details that you would, you know, need to know that much about that person besides maybe, you know, how tall they are, if you need to lengthen it and shorten it, that kind of thing. But because this is also meant to be a little bit oversized, it's a, this is a good gifting pattern for the men in your life, especially if you want to give like an uncle or your father or your husband or your brother or something, something really nice. I think this would be a really good pattern to reach for for that. And I'm definitely going to be reaching for it. <laughs> but the next one is S9389, which is a Mimi G pattern. This one um, is for two different lengths of a trench coat. I really am excited about this trench coat because it is quite stylish. It looks quite modern. It's definitely meant to be more of a layering piece. This is not going to be a coat that I think would suit um, wintertime weather, like actual, you know, 10, 2 degrees here sometimes. Um, definitely not for that, but a good lightweight jacket to throw on if it's just maybe um, a little bit rainy or a little bit cool outside. It is meant to be made with lighter weight fabrics like microfiber and ripstop um, and even lightweight wools. So, um, I think I will probably lean towards a more waterproof option for my husband and this be his kind of stylish rain jacket type thing. Um, I really, really like the style of this jacket a lot. And if it's anything like other simplicity patterns that I've worked up, I'm going to be able to, um, 
get this pattern done for him quite quickly. For the men's patterns, for whatever reason, there's like not nearly as much fluff and like fuss and workarounds that I feel like I have to do with the construction. So I'm really excited to dig into this pattern and uh, make this up for him. Speaking of Mimi G, I did also pick up a Mimi G pattern. Um, that she recently came out with. This is S9370 and it's for a knit dress. This dress has the cutest cutout on the side. Absolutely so cute. Um, I really like the idea of this dress and I really like the fact that it is a raglan style dress which means that it'll be super fast to put together. I won't have any real issues with construction and I know that Mimi is usually pretty to the point when she does um, put these patterns together so I'm quite excited about it. Even more excited because this pattern has um, like the long sleeve option and if I do make the long sleeve version I think that I will probably just put a contrast in where the cutout is so that I am able to wear this dress um, when it is quite cold. I mean, sure, I could also not put that in there and just have it open, but y'all, I'm always cold. So I know I'm going to be cold with that hole, with that hole there. Um, and since I'm talking about fall things, I think that I'll probably put in some fabric right there. But this is for, um, you'll want to use something with a little bit more body, a little bit more weight to it. So she suggests jersey, rib knit, stretch velvet. And um, I think that's probably where I would lean to. Stretch velvet would be beautiful. Y'all know I love stretch velvet. Um, but rib knit and jerseys, if you're going to use a jersey, I probably wouldn't say that you'll want to use something really lightweight. You want to use something at least 10 ounces and heavier because it is quite a fitted dress. But so cute. So cute. I love this. And I like the fact that there's the variation of the skirts too. You can do a more pencil style skirt or you could do a more um, a line type skirt that has a little bit more swish and movement in it. Love. Okay, so getting back into the more separates situation, because I did veer off into dresses for a while there, but I did get some separates and I saw some really, really, really great um, staples that they added into this um, this lineup. Now I don't usually look for separates so I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's something they always do is add several different um, separates patterns but there actually wasn't very many tops. I don't remember seeing very many tops but I did see lots of um, bottoms. So I picked up several different bottoms because I do want to make all three of these. We'll see what that really looks like but I'll start with the first one, which is S9375, which is for a skirt. Now, this has variations out the wazoo. And I have been talking about making a skirt for a really long time. And I don't know what keeps happening here. Don't know what keeps happening. <laughs> but I definitely want to make some skirts for fall. Now, this pattern says it's for chambray, cotton blends, crepes, flannel, soft linen blends, stretch wovens, and tropical wools. I don't know what is a tropical wool. I've never heard of that before, but I imagine it's a lighter weight wool. Anyways, standard kind of bottom type um, recommendations. I will probably make several of these in flannel because I love flannel skirts and I really love the flannel, the humongous flannel skirt I made last year. I wear that quite a bit. Um, but I, I do have lots more uh, flannel prints that I saw at Joanne that I would really love to pick up. I did see several different prints and also just some colors that I really liked in flannel at Joanne um, when I did pick this pattern up. Now, I flannel is kind of strange because you definitely want to put it in the dryer, but you don't want to dry it for too long too often because it will start to pill up. Um, even if you get an anti-pilling one, it will eventually start to happen. So um, I will probably make some that aren't in flannel too, just so that I can have several in rotation. But I might batch make a couple of these skirts. I think they're so cute. And just with the different variations, because it doesn't really look like the same skirt, especially if you change the length of the skirt from variation to variation and like what the front tie kind of is doing. So they have 
like one that kind of is, what do they call that? It's not like a handkerchief. What do they call that? I don't know, but one where the skirt is a little bit asymmetrical where the tie front is and then one that is directly in line with the hem of the skirt too. So I think playing around with those and like whether or not you want to have the tie on there or not, you could get a lot of really great staple skirts that will give you a lot of variation, but you're really only sewing the same pattern. You're really sewing the same pattern over again. Anyways, so excited about this. But I also saw a different skirt that's kind of more the vibe of the skirt that I made last year. This is Simplicity or S9377, which is so cute. Oh my gosh. When I saw this, I got so excited. I love button front skirts. And so this skirt has pleats, which I love, and button front which I love and it also has the option for you to do kind of like a contrast yoke tie situation with maybe like um suede or um like a leather something like that to make the detail look so cute or like you could do it in denim uh I just I'm getting very excited about the potential of this um of this skirt <laughs> to just be really really cute um, it does have two different lengths on it, so you could do one that comes just below the knee, or you could do one that comes a little bit more so at the knee. And it says that you can use cotton, cotton blends, denim, poplin, and linen types, um, and sateen, and chambray, and lightweight flannel. So if I wanted to, I could make another flannel skirt, but just with a different sort of detail with the pleats and also with the yoke and everything. So very, very excited about this pattern. Um, and it is a little bit fabric hungry, but not super duper fabric hungry. Um, I'm still seeing that if you're doing something that's a 60 with, for my size anyway, two and three eighths a yard, or two and three eighths of a yard to make this skirt, skirt B, which is the longest length. So I don't know, that still seems pretty good for as full of a skirt this is. I mean, hey, I'm willing, I'm willing. Anyways, I really like this skirt. And then the last kind of separate thing that I got or bottom type pattern that I got was S9376, which is for a basic pair of slacks. Um, I do have a pair of slacks that I made from Simplicity last year with another set that they had. It was one of their kind of um, full outfit type patterns. And I will leave that link down below in a card or something for you so you can see that pattern. But I want to add some regular slacks to my wardrobe as well. This is another pattern that I could really see myself batch making, getting a couple of pant type fabrics and um, just cutting them all out and getting them whipped up, working it out. This fabric is, or this pattern is pull on pants though still. So it is not going to be something that you'll have to do a lot of excessive fitting with. Um, cause it's, it's got elastic. So <laughs> I'm very excited about that. I'm excited. To, I like a pull on pant. I know some people are like, eh, I don't like pull on. I love a pull on pant. Okay. I love a full on pant, especially if it fits right. So this one uses um, chinos. Well, it recommends chino, corduroy, cotton blends, flannel again, linen pant, linen blends, and stretch wovens. And it also says light wool uh, blends, lightweight wool blends. Pretty standard. Um, I do like the idea of this pattern quite a bit. There is so many different options here. They do have it to where you can also elasticate the cuff at the bottom and have kind of more of a jogger style pant. Um, or you could have cuffs on the bottom or you could just do a regular hem. And the front, you can do like a faux drawstring or um, add belt loops or anything like that. So you have a couple of different options on kind of the feel for this pattern. I probably would go for more classic pants because I do want to add some classic style pants to my wardrobe. Um, and I already have kind of like a platy print set type situation, but these still have pockets in the front. I mean, if you wanted to, you could add some patch pockets onto the back if it was really important to you, but I probably won't. 
I don't really use my pockets very much anyway, but I really like the idea of having this in my wardrobe and building up that whole staples situation. Okay, so the next thing I got, I feel like these two patterns are fairly similar. At least the style of them is quite similar. I, in the bodice construction, these are both raglan style uh, patterns. The first one is S9380, which is a dress pattern. Super cute dress pattern. This dress pattern has variations in the sleeves. It also has variations in the skirt, but the bodice is the same. So you can either do a hood with the bodice or without a hood. This is recommended for double knits, fleece, ponty, and sweatshirt fleece, and terry knit. So French terry would be really good. It's a really, I mean, it's a really loose fitting type um, throw on dress. You know, this is definitely the comfy comfy loungy style pattern. I don't usually go for oversized fit things so I probably will size down on this pattern so that it fits me the way that I want but I really liked the length of these and I like the different options they have for the sleeves because I think those are real fun and I like big puffy sleeves. So I also really like the tiered options. I have been complaining like crazy about gathering recently, but I really like tiered dresses and I like this tiered knit dress. I think it'll be really, really fun um, to have one like that and it just adds a little bit of interest to an otherwise fairly simple dress and a hood. Who wouldn't love that for fall time? I think this would be such a cool uh, dress to have in my wardrobe and I have several knits that I am thinking about using for this design and I think um, it would it would fit perfectly in my wardrobe. <laughs> I would prefer to have a sweatshirt dress as opposed to just wearing sweats any day so I'm happy to have a pattern like this. It uses three yards of fabric or more for most of these designs. And I don't typically buy three yards of knit fabric for dresses, so we'll see. Um, I might have to forego a hood or something if I really want to make this, but I really like the idea of adding something like this into my wardrobe. Y'all, I am all, I'm all over the place. Okay, <laughs> but the next one is one I thought was really, really cool. I love the design of this dress. It is called, or it is S9384. And it's also a raglan style sweatshirt, but this is more for tops. I don't think any of these are dresses. Version A could potentially be a dress on you depending on your height. It probably would just be like a tunic for me. I don't love tunic style things, but I do like the variation of length that they offer with this pattern. So it has these very cool pleat type details in the front and in the back. It uses this, it recommends the same thing as the other dress. So those types of heavier weight knits. And I also like the fact that it has fleece in here because y'all know I love fleece and I would love to get some cool fleece um, sweatshirts, add some more into my wardrobe because I actually did wear the fleece, I think it's 9019 pattern. I wore that sunflower uh, cowl neck top a lot last year um, so I I wanted to get some more designs that I could have with fleece because I like that a lot um, but I really really like the sleeve variations that they have I like version C quite a bit um, I would probably make version C's sleeves with version B's length I think that would be so so cute and I want the hood because I want the hood <laughs> But I thought this would be so cool. I I think it is so fun. This one you could get under two yards for a couple of the designs. Um, if you forego the hood, you could get under two yards for most sizes um, for version D and version C, which is the cropped version. That one you could get with under two yards. And depending on what size A and B you could as well. But you maybe need two and a half yards more so for those type patterns, but with the interesting detail of having that kind of pleat there, making it a little bit more feminine, a little bit more cutesy than just a traditional sweatshirt, I'm here for it. I'll buy the extra half yard, okay?
I also saw that they had a few children's patterns that they added to this fall collection as well. And I really like the fact that they've started to include more children's patterns with these collections because a lot of us do make clothing for our children as well, or our grandkids, or nieces, you know, that sort of thing. And I am a sucker for children's patterns. I'll be the first to say it. I was really good though because I only got two. Now the first one I'm going to talk about is S9391, which I couldn't leave behind. And then my daughter was with me and she saw and it was just over with at that point. I had to get it. So this is for a hoodie and stuffy type pattern. Um, so each hoodie has its own animal that the ears are kind of on there for. And it comes with a pattern to make a stuffed animal and you could use the same fabric for the hoodie as you do for the animal. So for the cat, they have a pink cheetah print with cat ears on the hood. For the um, pig, they have a little pig stuffy with pig ears. I'm not really sure that I get that those are pig ears though, but all right. And then um, for the dog, they have a dog pattern with dog ears and then they also have a bunny rabbit with bunny rabbit ears on the hood for the sweatshirt. Now this is so cute. So you could use faux fur, you can also use fleece and minky fleece. Um, and for the lining they said you could use double knit or jersey. Hmm. Which is interesting to me. I didn't know this pattern was lined when I got it, but I don't typically line these jackets. But I'm interested. I might line it in jersey. That would be kind of cool. It'd be a good way to use up some jersey scraps that I have as well. Sorry, I don't know why there's so many motorcycles today. So if you've heard some, I'm, I'm very sorry. Literally. Anyways, you will also need some sort of fiber fill, to, of course, to fill the um, little... Uh, animals and also some of the ears I think need fiber fill in them as well but how fun and how cute that would just be a super again another great gifting type pattern that if you're getting if you're wanting to make something for a younger a younger child this pattern goes from half from the half size to the size four um, which I'm thankful for because like lots of simplicity patterns the ease in these patterns are quite large usually three or four inches of wearing ease. So um, my daughter would quite comfortably fit into the size two still, even though she is a size three in um, most sizing. She is in the size three for this pattern, but I would make her a size two because like I said, there's quite a bit of ease in these patterns. So yeah, love this design. And then I also got S9393, which is adorable. Honestly, when I saw this, I thought, what a stylish little girl. That little girl is so stylish, and I want my daughter to be just that stylish. Now, I have um, already shown this pattern to my daughter, and she says that she absolutely wants the little outfit that the um, model is wearing in the sample. I would probably make her the full long sleeve version, but this pattern comes with quite a few different options which I think would be really great for fall in general. Um, these tops have a elasticated neck and elasticated sleeves. So these would be really great layering tops for long or long sleeve tops or even elbow length tops to have underneath um, like jumper dresses. This would be the perfect pattern to have under those type things or overalls, which are things that my daughter really loves to wear in the fall. I know I want to make her lots more overalls this um, this fall because she really enjoyed all of the overalls that she had last year. So I think this would be a really great pattern to have under there. But also, it's a super great long sleeve pattern for you to have with woven garments for if you're doing something a little bit nicer, like going to dinner or something like that. I mean, the world's your oyster here. It also has pants, little cute chinos. I thought those were adorable. Oh my gosh. I want to make these so bad for her. Um, the little pants make me really excited. I love, because they're just miniature, mini pants. Anyways, um, my daughter is, like I said, a size three in most sizes. This pattern, I'm not 100% sure will work out for her. We'll have to see because these 
um, these patterns do have quite a bit of ease in them. Like for instance, the size three, the finished chest, chest measurement is 29 inches. For the size three, the actual body measurement is 22 inches. So just in there, you've got seven inches of ease in the top, which it is a quite um, full, kind of flowy, big top, but that's still a lot of extra room for a little kid. So we'll see um, how I get on with this pattern. I might still make it up and just have it for her just in case, but because there is elastic everywhere, I think that I will be able to get away with making it for her now and potentially just making the elastic a little bit tighter. We'll see. Um, really, really, really like this pattern um, a lot and I'm happy that they released that. And now the last two patterns I'm going to talk about is S9368, <laughs> which is for accessories. So this is a mask and hat type pattern. It has um, two hats and a hood, actually. I really like this pattern because, as I've mentioned, I like the prospect of wearing hats, even though my hair is quite thick. Um, Regular hats just do not fit over my head and one thing that really excited me is that this pattern already had a very large size range. So it goes from a finished 21 inch measurement to a full size of 24 inches. Now the 24 inch hat I think will be absolutely perfect for my head and I'm very excited to make this bucket hat that they have on here and also um, the it's kind of more like a cloche. I'm not a cloche. Do not know what that's called. I don't know what they call that. I don't know. It's got like a brim, but it is more like a hoodie. So, I mean, not a hoodie, like a beanie, <laughs> like a hoodie. It's more like a, a, like a brimmed hat is version C. I really like that. I mean, I like them all. I could see myself making all of these patterns. This would be another really great gifting pattern because like I said, if you know that person has a big head or has big hair, you are covered throughout all the sizes. And even you could go for version D, the hood, which would still be super cute on anyone and it wouldn't matter what size their head is at all. And give them a matching mask with what's going on right now. That is a great gift. I would love to receive that gift, okay? But anyways, super, super useful to have in my wardrobe. I never got around to making a hat for summertime, but for wintertime, I really don't think I'm going to pass up on the bucket hat for sure. And then the last pattern that I got was S9364. And this is for meditation cushions. So I got this pattern because we are transforming our guest room into a workout area so that we can work out at home because in the winter time we don't get out and hike as much and just get outside much at all because it's usually quite cold or snowy or all the things of winter time. And so I really get tired of moving all of my furniture around in the living room to work out in there. So we're making that area into an actual workout area. And I thought how cute and cool would that be if I could make like one curtains for the room in a fabric I really like, but also have the matching fabric be for the cushions that are in the studio because I do a lot of yoga and Pilates and body weight exercises. Um, so I really do spend quite a, t quite a bit of time on the ground. So I want to make one of these, um, one of these cushions. I think I might make D or I might make B. I'm not, or no, E. D or E. I like the look of both of those. And they have some other cushions that I think could be more so support for like um, neck and also for like if you're needing a little bit of support underneath your hand or something like that. If you, you know, can't quite reach the ground in a stretch or something. You know, that sort of thing. And I was really pleasantly surprised to see this there. Like, super pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting to see this pattern. I didn't even know it was going to be offered, but I had to pick it up. You can make this pattern with cottons, linens, twills, and denims. And, yeah, I think it will work out really, really great. 
I am really, really excited to um, report back to you all and let you know how that goes. I don't know when I would make it, but I do need to pick on some colors and things like that um, for the room in general. So, you know, all of that is kind of coming together, but very happy to add these patterns to my collection. Let me know if you want to see me do any sew alongs for any of these patterns that I mentioned in this video. I know I get those messages quite a bit of people asking me to go ahead and sew through certain patterns, especially when I've changed the construction for certain things. But I am very interested in continuing to do um, pattern hauls and things like that and my usual vloggy content. But maybe I will add in some kind of sew with me type things as well and um see how that goes and yeah that is me done as far as fall patterns go for now I always say it's been a long time since I bought patterns but mm, we'll see I'm keeping my eyes peeled for more pattern sales um, as always I thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good rest of your day okay bye bye